Adventure Oshkosh on the last day of a long show, but it's been fruitful for a lot of people. We trust that for Ed Fisher as well of Race Air Designs. I'm Dan Johnson, and we're going to talk about a couple of really interesting airplanes, but let's set the stage a little bit. This year is the 30th anniversary for one of aviation's most charming and most free segments, Part 103. And here we got a great example. The sign taped on the seat says Legal 103 Ultralight, and it is. I've known Ed's designs for some time, flown a few of them, and we're going to talk about two of them here today. So this one here, Ed, is uh, which model is this for us, and how long have you been producing this one? This is the Race Air Skylight. This aircraft is 23 years old, 22 years old. Uh, I started, uh, we brought it here in 1991 and won Grand Champion Ultralight and down on the farm. And Mary Jones did an article in Sport Aviation, it was well received and has put us on the map for selling plans and components. Was this your first aircraft then? The first this, one that you no, brought the, to the, the party? The Zippy Sport was my first design of my own. I had built a Baby Lakes and a Sonarai before then. So this is my second design and in 1991 we were well received. and. Since that time, uh, it's been a member of the family. This aircraft has got about 600 hours on it now. It's been recovered once. It's still flying strong, lifting me around the sky <laughs> with the 28 horsepower engine still. Excellent. Which engine are you using on this Today, one? we're back to the Rotax 277, 28 horsepower. You can still find them. Factory service center authorized overhauls. You can still buy them reasonably. We've also flown the aircraft with the Hearth F-33, which is a great little engine for the airplane and if I build a flyaway factory skylight it will contain the F-33 engine with a warranty. Which by the way Ed can do. So let's review a little bit why these kinds of airplanes that fit the 103 segment are so cool. No pilot license required, no end numbers, no aircraft certification, no medical needed for the pilot and the manufacturer if he chooses and the customer wishes can fully build it for you and you can fly it away. Now you're going to require that they have some knowledge about Absolutely. this. Absolutely. You're not just going to hand it to anybody that walks up off the street. So that's the control in the in the situation. But if that's not aviation freedom, I don't know what is. We love part 103 and I never intend to ever get rid of this airplane. It's just been great. It's been fun. We have experimental amateur build aircraft that I've designed as well. But the old 103 allows the freedom of expression and, and the fun. At two gallons an hour, you can have a great airplane and expensive. And, and you've still got great performance. I mean, this little yes. airplane will cruise around in the sky at 55 miles an hour. Yes. It's got a climb rate of 7 800 feet a minute. I mean, it's just a great little airplane. Yes. Many, many people say they are not fond of the two-cycle engine, but it has its place, and in 103 is its place. Well, a lot of them aren't fond of it because they don't know how to take care of right. it properly because they've grown up in a world of four-stroke cars and all the rest, but the facts are that if you pay attention to the two-stroke, just like you have to pay attention to a four, that it will last you a long time. Yes, you, you overhaul it more at more frequent intervals, Correct. but the cost is dramatically less. So, yeah, you look at it a little more often, but it can last you a long time. You said something earlier I think is really important to people that, yeah, there's two 77s out there. We know that. Yes. Uh, what may what some people may not know is that Rotax will still support the engine with yes. parts and the necessary components so you can keep that engine running. Correct. Lockwood Aviation has a lot of parts. I've dealt with them on purchasing parts for overhaul and you can buy an overhauled engine anywhere from $1,200 to $1,800 for this aircraft. <laughs> okay, so let's talk a little bit about, we don't need the exact price because these things change and the video will be around for a while, but give us ballpark estimate for what it takes to get this aircraft pretty much as I see it in the air yes. from a cost standpoint. As a home builder, if you purchase my drawings, there's only one part of this aircraft that's proprietary and that is the widget, which is the wing rib attach cup. Everything else on this aircraft you can build from raw materials and if you use a used overhauled engine, you can still today in 2012 build this for less than $10,000. <laughs> that's pretty remarkable. What about if you do the whole thing for them? If you do Ball the whole thing, estimate. you want an aircraft in a two-color paint job that I have test flown and you can come with your trailer and pick it up, $19,950. <laughs> with the Hearth engine, which has a one-year warranty. Okay, so people are saying that, well, yes, I understand maybe you can make a 103 in a trike or a powered parachute or something like that, but you can't do it in a fixed-wing airplane. And here we have proof right in front of us or right behind us that that's simply not the case. Correct. There are three axis airplanes that fly well and do good things uh, that are available inexpensively and that you can fly under this rule which is now 30 years old and yes. I don't know when it'll ever expire. I don't think it will. We so hope that's it stays. great. 
So there's over a hundred of these flying right now from home builders. Is that right? That's yes. excellent. So that leads right to the next question about well, what's it all made of? What are the component parts here? That uh, I see some aluminum. I see some uh, welded steel. Give me the kind of the general review right. of what it's made of. The basic steel tube fuselage, 4130, welded, gas or TIG. The lift struts are aluminum. The landing gear legs are aluminum, tube within a tube. The wings are the typical ladder construction of the early ultralight days. Okay, uh -huh. Tubular aluminum spars, rigid tubular uh, drag and anti-drag bracing, fabric covered with nose ribs. Tail is aluminum. Fabric is Dacron 1.7. This particular uh, recover job is with dope, nitrate and butyrate. You can use latex, you can use urethanes. I chose dope on this one. It's fairly light if you, if you put a few coats on. And uh, so a, a typical home builder or, or somebody who says, okay, I've never really tackled this kind of thing before, but I'm intrigued and I want to stay on a budget. What kind of time does it take them and how difficult will it be for them? A first time builder told me he spent 700 man hours. Okay. I've had people spend 1500 man hours. I'm telling the, the crowds, plan on a thousand hours of your spare time. Build this airplane a hundred dollars at a time. When you're done, you got a paid-for airplane that's brand new. That's pretty cool. So, but you also sell subcomponents for the uh, plane as well. Ed? Correct. Uh, I do offer a pre-welded fuselage, uh, axle kits, wing rib kits to speed him up. You trade time for money. And but some of the, like, for example, I wouldn't try and tackle welding myself. Mm -hmm. Not you have to go get educated about it if Correct. you know what I know, and I don't know much about that kind of thing. So I could get those those parts from you Correct. already done. Correct. There's no requirement that you lay out a bunch of cash for a complete kit. You do it at your pace, you do it at your financial pace, $100 at a time, or if you want to buy a fuselage and speed you up immediately, that's great too. I love the $100 at a time, Rob. Yes. That, that's, that's great. It's a payment plan, but not one you have to go to the bank to get. Right. So. No approval required. <laughs> we did this, we're doing it, and we can sell you a set of plans if you want to have one too. So that's great. Uh, I've gotten the pleasure to fly not all of uh, Ed's many designs, but I've flown a few of them and I've loved them. They're really nice little airplanes that are fun to fly, not challenging to fly, and as we mentioned earlier, very cost effective. You can find out more about that on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks a lot for joining us today.